Hey cruisers, we have a very special guest surprise for you today. We're talking with Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides here on YouTube, direct from his stateroom on the Mind Shift 2. He is going to tell us all about his cruise on Tui Cruises out of Germany. Morgan grew up in Minnesota here in the U.S., but has lived in Germany for over 20 years, and he runs an awesome, huge YouTube channel, which we'll link to in the description. Morgan creates videos on cruise travel with a variety of cruise lines, and he also has quite an extensive collection of travel films of his visits to theme parks and water parks and other awesome vacation destinations. Morgan... Thank you so much for taking time out of your cruise to talk with us. Hey, Sherry. Nice to finally meet you. Yes, <laughs> I'm here on a cruise ship. I'm on the TUI Cruises Mind Shift 2, and the TUI Cruises Mind Shift 1 is also cruising around. We saw it yesterday, ran into it today, and yeah, it's crazy. Hold on, I'll show you guys. Look, there's the ocean. There's my balcony, and here I am. Wow, your balcony cabin is gorgeous. I love the modern artwork, and I must say it's so incredible to see the ocean passing by. So tell us, how did this trip come about? Well, this was all extremely last minute. I had been considering doing one of these trips. They were just recently announced, and they're called the they're called Blaue Reisen, which means like a, a journey into the blue. So we are not stopping anywhere. We're, we're cruising for seven days and we've gone up the coast of Norway and Sweden and Finland and now we're on our way back to Germany. And we did dock in, uh, in Stockholm, but nobody got on or off the ship. Anyways, I saw when they announced these, uh, these cruises and they looked interesting to me when I was looking at the prizes and looking at the dates and it was something I was considering for the near future. And then through a connection I have with one of the most famous German cruise YouTubers, uh, Matthias Mohr, the Schiffs tester, he just happened to get in touch with me and said there's an opportunity to cruise with the, the ship that's leaving tomorrow. That was on last Thursday when he got in touch with me. And uh, so it all just went so quickly and I, yeah, I was booked on the cruise 23 hours before we left. So that's how it came about. A little bit of luck and actually very little planning on my part. And I have to tell you, this is the first cruise to nowhere I've ever done. And one nice thing about cruises to nowhere is there's like no planning involved. You know, you don't have to do any research. <laughs> You're just on the ship. That's a really good point. No excursion planning. The packing is simplified, and you're just totally focused on relaxing on the ship. I like it. Now, how was the check-in and embarkation process for you? Well, normally with, with TUI Cruises, MindShift, there's an online check-in process, just like you know we know from the olden days of cruising. And that was something that I kind of uh, yeah passed up because I had to do my check-in online with a representative from TUI because I booked so last minute. However, in the information online and what I had to do on the telephone was pick a specific time window to show up at the port and the woman on the telephone and also in the information they sent me said, don't bother showing up early. This is your time. So, excuse me, when I arrived at the port, there were very few people there and it went so quickly. I didn't have to wait in any lines. I walked right in, right up to the counter, gave my information, got my picture taken uh, with, no, without a mask actually. And I was on the ship like 20 minutes after I showed up in the port. Okay, that sounds pretty straightforward. I know that some cruise lines in Europe are requiring all passengers to test before boarding. So I have to ask, was there a COVID test to board Mind Shift 2? Actually, I did not have to do or provide a COVID test. Uh, the numbers of cases in Germany are way down and they've been falling and falling and falling. Uh, up until very recently, we had a small uh, spike over the beginning, beginning of summer 
uh, vacation. But because the numbers are so low, uh, that also is a factor of why this is possible here in Germany. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because only residents of Germany are allowed on these cruises. I'm not saying citizens, residents. So people who can prove that they've been in Germany, I think for the last 30 days, that was the uh, that was the stipulation, and who have not come or visited any of these, uh, these, I don't know the word in English, these risky areas within the last 30 days. And because I have, you know, I live in Germany, I have like my German green card, and I hadn't been to any of those uh, risky areas within the last 30 days. That's how I managed to book a ticket for this cruise. And like I said, we did not have to provide a COVID test. However, we did have to do a long health questionnaire, so much longer than usual. And, you know, it's it's basically signing to say that I, you know, I promise uh, under you know, penalty of law, basically, that the answers that I am giving on this form are correct. And in the port, before we even checked in, we had to do a temperature check. And every day here on board, we have to, uh, we have to show up for a temperature check downstairs before noon. So those are two differences, two ways that they're monitoring the health of the people on board. Wow. Okay. So no mandatory testing at check-in at this point, but an extended health questionnaire and daily temperature checks. Sounds like TUI is working really hard to make sure that the early cruises go well and that they can keep everyone safe so we can keep cruising. Morgan, I know that Germany is in a different state of containment than we are here in the U.S. How did it feel to board a ship following or sort of in the midst of this global health crisis? Well, the thing is, is back home, when I'm home in Hamburg, Germany, where I live and where we departed from, I, I, you know, our period where everybody had to stay at home and nobody was going to work and none of the businesses are open or anything, we're past that now. So uh, restaurants are open, bars are open, shopping is open, tourist attractions are open. I've been to a lot of the German theme parks within the last month uh, and People are wearing masks and practicing social distancing, but things are much more relaxed than they are in other places around the world. And because we've been doing that successfully for the past like month in Germany now, uh, it, it felt okay to me knowing that it's only gonna be people from this country on board. And because of that, it's almost just like being at home, you know? Nobody's disembarking, nobody's going on any excursions. We're not even, you know, like I said, we're not docking anywhere. We leave Hamburg, we return to Hamburg, and the people on board remain the people on board. And in that sense, it's like being at home, kind of. You know what I mean? Home away from home. I love it. Speaking of home, we got a glimpse earlier, but can you share with us what type of cabin you are in? I'm in a balcony cabin here, and uh, it's pretty nice. And actually... You know, like I said, I booked the cruise at the very last minute and this was the cabin that was available. And I honestly, I think that they are only booking balcony cabins and suites at the moment because one of the itineraries that I was looking at for the next couple of weeks, uh, the one that I was originally sort of considering before this opportunity showed up, uh, there were no inside cabins to book. It was only balcony or higher. So I'm in a balcony cabin and I have no complaints. Nice. I almost feel like we're there with you. Almost. Not quite, but almost. <laughs> so are you required to wear masks on board? And if so, when are you required to wear masks? Yes. Masks were required from the moment I walked into the terminal until I got into my cabin on the ship. They are required in all public places, all public places on board, unless you are sitting down or of course, when you're eating and drinking, just like at home, or if you're in the pool, or I also found out that the fitness studio is open. And when you are sitting down at a machine, you can take it off. I haven't been to the gym, uh, but I, I heard that from another passenger. So all the crew, I haven't seen 
a single crew member without a mask on except the people I saw on stage in the show. Thank you for explaining that. I know that a lot of people want to know what the mask policies are right now. So speaking of shows, I saw one of your photos of the entertainment on your Instagram channel the other day, and it looked wonderful. Is there traditional entertainment on board? And how is it sort of differing from what you've experienced on your past cruises? Yes, uh, actually, there are shows. Uh, I saw one I saw one like production show and one comedy show. And the production show was made up of the four artists who are still on board. The cruise director mentioned that they sent, you know, most of the cast home. Usually they have really large production shows on uh, this brand. I think he said the cast was 22 people. And there were four people who ended up having to stay on board because they couldn't fly back to the countries that they were from. And those four people, uh, created a, like a 35 minute show, sort of like a mix of a dance concert and circus uh, with circus artistry. And I have to tell you, it was really good. It was, it was a, a small cast, but big emotions. And then there was also, like I said, a comedy show with a, with a comedian. Also, of course, on stage, not wearing a mask. When you go to the theater to uh, to watch one of these shows, you cannot pick your pick your own seat. There are crew members uh, who who meet you and take you to a specific seat, and that is where you have to stay put until the show is over. Uh, and once you get to your place, because the people are spaced out so much, they also allowed us to remove our masks. But to tell you the truth, I kept mine on, anyways. So. There is uh, or there are entertainment and activities on board, but it's very, it's, yeah, it's limited. I would say it's limited, but they do exist. Got it. Okay, thank you so much for explaining that. It's very interesting that the crew is escorting people to their seats, but honestly, it sounds pretty civilized to me and kind of a lot like what you would find when you go to the opera or a theater show. There's, you know, there's escorts in these theaters on land, so it makes sense. So does the ship feel crowded to you at all? Actually, no, <laughs> it's not crowded at all. There have been several times, I mean, like I said, it's only sea days and the weather's been okay. It's been like, we did have some high 70s, but it's been around the 70s. It's been pretty sunny. And there have been several times that I've walked over the pool deck and I haven't seen one person in the pool and nobody in the hot tubs. I mean, when <laughs> when are you on a cruise ship on a sea day and it's sunny and there's nobody in the pool or hot tubs? And that, you know, for me, is just like a clear sign of how few people there are on board. And when you consider that there that there's also like a very minimum amount of activities and there's still nobody in the pool or hot tubs. That just, you know, proves to me that there really are not a lot of people on board. Officially, in the information we got from, from the cruise line, it says that they're only allowed to book 60% capacity. But while I was um, checking in, oh, and I have to tell you about the mustard drill, by the way. While I was checking in, I heard crew members talking to each other, saying that they thought they were that there were less than 1,500 passengers on the ship. So the muster drill. Oh yes, the muster drill. What was it like? Did you like stand in groups for the drill or how was that handled? Yeah, you know, usually the muster drill is something that takes so much time and you go there and then you have to stand in those small packed groups for 25, sometimes 30 minutes until everybody's there. And then it begins. And then the captain or the cruise director does the announcement throughout the whole ship. And you have a crew member in front of you demonstrating it. Well, it was totally different. And I like it much better this way. They have several stations set up in the ship. And once you uh, have settled into your cab and you're supposed to grab your key card and go to your muster station. And then you basically get an individual, an individual uh, muster drill. So I was alone. I was sitting at a table in one of the restaurants and there was a crew member standing in front of me. They scanned my card. I sat down and he did, he did the speech that you usually get. And that was it. And the whole thing take, took maybe six minutes. 
from the time I got there till the time I was back out into the ship. And I like it, of course, I mean, how could you not like it better that way? The only major difference was, you know, at the end of the muster drill or during the muster drill, during normal days, then they they do the, you know, the, the seven short blasts and one long one. Uh, and it's the first time that you hear that like beep, beep, beep uh, on the ship. And they did it once, but as we were disembarking to demonstrate it for the whole people, of course, they're not going to do that, you know, a thousand times every time they do the muster drill. But that was definitely different and one thing that I like better. Whoa, that sounds like an incredible muster experience. I wonder if they're going to continue to do it that way with sort of that one-on-one -on -one approach. It also makes me wonder, are there any sort of disadvantages to the ship being so empty? Well, you know, the fact that the ship is not very crowded is great when it comes to, yeah, like wanting to go in the pool or wanting to go in the hot tubs, like I said, of course, when you go to uh, the buffet, and we can talk about that too, uh, when we go to, when I go to the buffet, I've sat at the same table every night. So it's like my table because there's just, you know, nobody else here. It does have a small disadvantage, and I talk about this more in the videos on, on my channel, the very unofficial travel guides. Uh, having so few people on board makes the, the vibe is different, like, and the fact that there's like no dancing in the clubs and there's no karaoke and there's no things, you know, like Royal Caribbean's The Quest, you know, how could you do something like that now? But uh, the vibe is just different. There's a lot less energy and that's just something to get used to. You know what I mean? There's, you don't hear like loud groups of people laughing and there's no, you know, people to to sing along with and make fun of in karaoke and stuff like that. So it's a little bit different, uh, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to accept to to be back on board. I'm so glad that you mentioned that about the vibe and the energy on the ship. I think that's something that's going to take time to return back to normal. I'm sure that there are some people who would love that quiet cruise experience, me for one, but many others who will really miss that energy and like the lively activity that comes along with ship life. Okay, so how was the service or how is the service and the overall staff and crew experience for you so far? The crew has been amazing. Uh, everybody so friendly, so engaged and I feel good being here and it seems like, at least it seems like they're happy to have work to do again, to have jobs. I mean, to think of how many people in this industry were affected by all these months where, you know, nothing was going on. And I think that, or I would assume that they understand how much of a responsibility they have now to make sure that everybody stays safe, to make sure that the industry can begin to start blooming and blossoming again, uh, you know, it's not only in our best interest as people who want a cruise, I think it's also in the best interest of the people who, who work in the cruise industry and, you know, the, the cruise lines all together. So it seems like they're doing a good job to me and I feel really good being here in their hands. Oh, for sure. I'm so glad to hear that. We need to get these cruise ship crews back to work and back to providing for their families, right? Okay, let's talk about food. I know people will want to know, is there room service available on this cruise? There is room service available. And it's something I always do on my channel on, on almost every cruise I've ever been on is I do a room service video where like we order room service together and sit down and eat it and have a chat. Uh, and I looked through the room service menu and uh, I don't know if it's been changed for now if, or if it's always like this on this line I'm looking because it's right here. Um, but uh, I'm probably not gonna do it this video or this trip because there's nothing on the menu that I really wanna eat. It's kind of a limited room service menu. However, I did ask and they um, they allow you to, you know, take food from the buffet uh, down to your cabin too, so maybe I'll do that. But speaking of the buffet, I'm sure you wanna know about that too, right? Yes, please tell us all about the buffet. Well, at least here on this ship, it's still set up like a normal buffet. They have the food 
in the stations like like I would assume it normally is on this ship. The difference is uh, you don't put any of the food on the plate yourself. So like, you know, I, I'm sure many of you have probably been watching the videos of people in Las Vegas and also we were at Disneyland Paris a couple uh, weeks ago and it's a little bit different there than it is here. But so when you go up to like the counter where the salad bar is and you've got all the carrots and lettuce and you know, all that stuff in front of you, usually you just reach down there and grab the, the spoon or whatever and put it all on your plate. Well. Here you get like a buddy from the crew who's wearing a mask and gloves and all that. And they like go with you down the line and they put the food on your plate for you. The silverware that you get is all packed in paper. So you get like a paper package when you enter the buffet after you've washed your hands. And that's got your silverware in it and your napkin. And so from the moment you wash your hands at the beginning of the buffet until you sit down at your table and start eating, you've touched nothing. And I think this is another thing where I think it's almost better this way. You know what I mean? Because not only have you touched nothing, but none of the other passengers have touched anything either. So I, I almost like it better this way. Of course, it's a little bit different having to, you know, be tell somebody, you know, to be like, no, 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 I want that potato, you know, no, the one in the back by the corner, you know, that was one thing that is really nice about a buffet. Usually is that if you're a picky eater, like I am, that, uh, you know, you can, you can pick out exactly the noodles that you want and pick out exactly the apple that you want. And now you have to kind of, you know, like steer somebody else's hand to the, you know, crispy corner of the lasagna or whatever. So yeah, but that's just a, a small thing and uh, it seems to be working well and I got used to it very quickly. Wait, a buffet buddy? Morgan, I didn't see that one coming. I mean, I would agree that does sound better and, of course, more sanitary than the old school buffet style. It might feel kind of weird at first to say, no, I want that cucumber over there. <laughs> but like you said, you just have to get used to it. Are you finding that passengers are generally cooperative and eager to follow these rules? I have to say, uh, I think just about everybody I've seen has been doing a pretty good job at wearing their masks when they're walking around the ship. Uh, one thing that has, one thing that I've definitely noticed is working very well is the social distancing. And, you know, as somebody who's lived in Germany for 20 years, I can tell you when Germans wait in lines during normal times, they'll stand like directly behind you. And so the fact that there's any space between you and somebody else while you're waiting in a line is a big difference here. And I've definitely noticed it. I mean, maybe that's one of the reasons why it is so noticeable just because it's so different than the culture is normally here in Germany. Um, I have also seen people, uh, you know, remind other people to put their masks on and it seems to be working pretty well. Oh, yes. We've noticed that when we've traveled in Europe, too. Like the social distancing bubble is a little bit smaller in Europe. People stand really close to you. So I'm glad to hear that it's going well. All right, Morgan, I want to let you get back to your wonderful cruise. So our last question for you today is what advice would you give to people looking to cruise in the near future? Well, my advice for anybody who's thinking about booking one of these two week cruises is if you've got the time and the money, then go for it. I feel really good about this. It's been a really special uh, experience. We did uh, like a really close pass by with the other mind ship and our mind shift. And we also uh, went past the, the Carnival Mardi Gras. I saw the Carnival Mardi Gras today. And uh, then we all, we did like a little like dance with the other ship and it's just been really special. And so I would say if it's something you're interested in and you have the time and you are living in Germany, then go for it. And as far as uh, the other things that are being offered right now, I think, you know, it's still pretty restricted. So I don't know what I could tell you for advice. You know, if you're really missing cruising, then, you know, of course, one of the things I can um, 
one of the things I can suggest, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, is to watch cruise videos. There's a lot of fun cruise content online. You know, maybe go back and watch some things that you've seen before from your favorite cruise YouTubers. Uh, there's there's a lot of fun things like that you can do and a lot of the the cruise youtubers who who aren't lucky enough to be on a ship right now like i am are doing fun things you know like they're doing uh, like quizzes and trivia and things like that so that's one way to sort of you know hold off until uh until things start opening up in other countries as well and i don't know i guess that's the best advice i have at the moment Aw, oh, thank you. That is such good advice. I was following your Instagram stories and I noticed that you saw Carnival Mardi Gras and I had like a ah moment. That is so cool. It was great. Morgan, thank you so much for sharing your experience with our audience and for taking time out of your cruise to answer our questions. I just want you to know how much we appreciate this. Well, thank you. Yeah, and I hope you have a wonderful remainder of your cruise and a super safe trip home. Will do. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, Morgan. Thank you so much. Wow, that was amazing. And I want to again thank Morgan for inviting us into his balcony cabin for this insightful interview on the return of cruising, the future of cruising. Be sure to follow Morgan at the very unofficial travel guides on YouTube and on social media. And if you liked Morgan's Sea Day shirt, we will link to it in the description of this video as well. Until next time, please join me in thanking Morgan and we'll see you soon on the high seas.